Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Nathan Art Podcast. We'd like to be joined by Ricky Shakes, uh, forum, for now retired player, played for Boreham Wood at Wembley, got promotion with them, won promotion with Ebbsfleet for four years, uh, also played for Kidderminster, Bolton and started his career out of Bolton. So Ricky, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much. How are you not doing? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, good. Uh, how, what have you been doing to pass the time in lockdown? Oh, uh, well, just spending time with the family. Um, I've just had a newborn. He was, uh, he was born on Easter Sunday. And obviously, I've got my three-year-old running around. So, two boys now. And um, in, t- in terms of football, how, how did you get into football? Uh, well, as a youngster, really. Um, you know, I started playing for schools and stuff like that. Um, Pretty much, my mum just introduced me into it uh, at a young age, and ever since that, I loved it. You know, um, I started off late really because I was in secondary school and I was still playing Sunday league and Saturday league, and for my school as well. So, you know, it was a busy, busy weekend. So I was playing Saturday, Sundays, and then in the week for my secondary school as well. And then I, I got picked up from um, Charlton at the age of fifteen, and it all started from there. You then obviously went from Charlton to Bolton. Uh, what was it like, obviously playing at Bolton for a little bit? Yeah, no, it was it was good. It was good. Um, obviously leaving school, uh, getting released from Charlton at the time, and um, it was just literally, where am I going to go next? Went to the Liddershaw trials, uh, exit trials, and uh, got picked up from Bolton, and I did my three year uh, three year YTS and one year pro, and I obviously had to live up there as well, so. Coming, a boy coming from South London, Brixton, um, having to move up north is a, a big difference, you know. But um, no, it was good. It was good. I had uh, in-laws, landlord, uh, landlord and landlady uh, looking after me, and it was it was very good. And I believe you made your your debut for Bolton in the FA Cup game against Tranmere, and, and you scored a, a last-minute equaliser. How did that feel? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, yeah, that. That day, you know, sitting on sitting on the bench, um, not thinking I'm gonna come on, and yeah, one nil down, and I think I think it was probably about I came on, I think it was the 80th minute, um, and yeah, actually coming on and then scoring the equaliser on my debut, is just unbelievable, you know. Didn't know what to, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to celebrate. <laughs> um, but it was just one of those where you know all the boys and the, the players who came and just like gave me a big hug and just told me well done really and obviously at the end Sam Allardyce told me well done you know you done well for us and obviously um, nice to get a replay and during your time at Bolton you went on loan to Bristol Rovers and, and Berry. what did you learn from those loans? Uh, I'll tell you two different kind of loans I went um period where I went to Bristol Rovers first and I was there for a month and only got to play 25 minutes <laughs> uh, coming off the bench playing 25 minutes and um, yeah that was just a you know big experience for me um, obviously at the time Sam Allardyce wasn't was a happy man <laughs> and what, he, he it was basically it was meant to be a, a three month loan you know and Sam saw that I wasn't playing I wasn't even coming off the bench or anything like that and he just had enough and he called me back, recalled me back, and he said, you know what, I'll send you along somewhere else. And then, yeah, I went to Bury, And Bury, yeah, Bury, I, I played, um, if I believe, I think I scored four or five goals at Bury when I was there. And, um, yeah, no, that was a good experience, good experience being there. Um, playing against Swansea at the time. Swan, Swansea got um, promoted. It was the last game of the season. I remember very well that... Um, they won the game and they got promoted and obviously all their players celebrating on the pitch, their fans running on the pitch. So, you know, that was just a whole new experience for me, that happening. I just thought to myself, I saw the fans running on the pitch and they're, clearly they're not my fans. So I thought, let me go back to the changing room. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, Sam Allardyce. Cool. What was it like being managed by Sam Allardyce? Yeah, no, down to earth, down to earth guy. Um, you know, he looked after the youngsters. You know, and even the olders as well. He looked after all the players. Um, you know, you might you might see on match days and stuff like that that he could be an angry man at sometimes. But you know, behind closed doors, he's um he's a big teddy bear. 
Um, and, you know, the, the time when I was there and what I experienced from him, you know, when the boys were doing well, um, he, gave them, he gave them praises, you know, where they was winning on a Saturday and they was off till Thursday, you know, and he did that, he did that for a month straight because, you know, he said, you get me good results, then I will reward you for it. So literally win on Saturday and we didn't see the first team till Thursday training again and then they win again on Saturday, the same again. So they had like a mini, a mini holiday. <laughs> and um, I then believe you went, went on to, to Swindon um, and, and in your first season, uh, you got relegated. Was that tough? Yeah, it was. It was, you know. Um, obviously, the manager at the time was um, the late Andy King. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away. Um, but, yeah, no, obviously, it was, it was a good experience. Um, coming closer down to South as well, so I'm more close to home as well. Uh, the players I played with, you know, it was all good. Um, but, yeah, it, did, it didn't really work out for us that season. And, um, yeah, being relegated and having that on your CV, you know, it's not a good look. But at the end of the day, it's how you're going to bounce back from that. You mentioned the bounce back and uh, Swindon did bounce back. What was it like, obviously, getting your first promotion as a player? Really good, really good. You know, um, we had, so obviously he got the sack and we had um, Dennis Wise and Gus Poyet as our manager coming in. Um, that was that was good. It was, you know, he brought a spark to the team. Uh, and when he came in, I, I respect him highly because when he first came in, you know, he just said, he brought all the boys in. He said, boys, you know, I'm not, I'm new to this. I'm not really on you calling me gaffer or manager or anything like that. He said, you know what? I don't, I don't mind. You can just call me Dennis or call me Wisey. You know, and we thought to ourselves, wow, is he being serious? Is he, you know, is he bantering? And he was like, no, he wasn't bantering at all. So it came like he was one of the boys. And I think that the boys respected him for it. And he got a lot out of the boys as well at the same time. And, you know, when it comes to training sessions, he'll join in, Gus Poyet will join in. And I tell you what, they haven't lost it one bit. Maybe maybe their pace, but, you know, their nouse and their knowledge of the game and stuff like that. You know, he had Gus Poyet. Obviously, he's a striker, but he's all playing at the back like he's a defender. You know, and he just scrambles here and there. You have Wisey just smashing players and everything like that. But it was a good atmosphere and a good vibe. So, and I think that's what helped along the way of getting our promotion. Obviously, he got a job onto, I think he went to uh, Leeds or Newcastle, one of the two. And then Paul Sturrock came in to finish it off. I think it was the last uh, two to three months of the season. And, you know, fair play to us and the boys, you know, we, we managed to pull it off and get promoted that season and it was on our turf as well so you know it was quite good and we played against MK Dons on the last game of the season and they got promoted that that day as well so that's another way where our fans run in the pitch their fans run in the pitch so that time I didn't run into the changing room because we was all you know celebrating the same thing <laughs> and um, I, I believe you were released by Swindon was that disappointing? Yeah, it was. It was very disappointing. Um, you know, the amount of games I played for them and obviously under Wisey as well at the same time, you know, I played a lot of games underneath him. And, you know, change of managers, you know, sometimes it doesn't really help because, you know, now he wants to bring his own players in and, you know, and um, and obviously I've just had, I just had to either sit on the bench or I was in the stands for the last couple months. And that was really frustrating for me. But, you know, that's life for football, really. Um, you know, you have your good days and you have your bad days. And it was just one of them ones where that's another one where, OK, how am I going to bounce back from it? You know, and I didn't give up. And obviously, I just moved on to the next one. Yeah, you moved to, to Brentford um, and you had another good, that, another good year there. Uh, what, what did you make of that season? Yeah, that, that season was really good. Um, I had uh, Terry Butcher as the manager. Um, you know, everybody knows him as the England guy who smashed his head open with his <laughs> blood and stuff like that. You know, a hard man. Um, but no, he was, he was a good manager. Him and had him and Andy Scott as well. Andy Scott was assistant manager. You know, had a good good career at uh, Brentford. And um, yeah, no, it was good. It was really good. And uh, was it tough being released by Brentford as well? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely, because. With Brentford, it was um, 
you know, it was kind, it was kind of funny the way how it happened because literally I um, finished up towards the end of the season. A couple of the boys was already getting told that they were being released. Mm. Uh, so to the back end of the season, boys wasn't like, you know, turning up for training or anything like that because they already told them what he's looking to do. Uh, I carried on training, you know. He told me, you know, don't worry, you'll be safe or whatever. I was like, cool. Um, done the last training uh, training of the season. We did like a, a yo-yo test, like a fitness test and stuff like that. And that was to see where you're at then. And then when you come back, you know, uh, see how well you've done or whatever. I literally done that test, had a meeting after, and he <laughs> just said to me, um, yeah, well, um, he's changed his mind and literally wants to bring his own players in and stuff like that. You know, you can imagine I've, I've lost my head because I've just been running up and down. I'm tired. <laughs> and now you're telling me I've got to go now and I've got to find somewhere else. And at the time, I had an agent at the time and he wasn't, he wasn't impressed either because, you know, he went away on holiday because he sorted out. He thought everything was all sorted. And he said, yeah, don't worry, everything's all sorted so you can just relax on holiday. And... Yeah, that's that's what happened really, you know, that was that was a crazy one for me. You know, I lost my head, but you know, at the end of the day, I still see it as it's football, you know, you know what I mean? You are, you get released or you get stayed on, it's just one of them one of them ones, you know, never give up. You, then obviously you left Brentford and you you signed for Epsom, obviously it's a bit different from, from Brentford to Epsom, obviously part time, but obviously Epsom just won the FA trophy. So why did you choose to, to obviously you had to go down to, to non league as well? Why did you choose Fleet? Well, you know, what? one one of the reasons why I might as well, um, I'd say, you know, there's one guy who recommended me that was Darius Charles at the time. Um, I think he was he was on loan to you just before I came, um, so obviously he knew about Edfleet and stuff like that, and um, obviously he played with me at the at the start of the season when I was at um, Brentford, and you know I had a I spoke to him and you know he asked I said to him um, what I thought about it. You know, and he said, you know, it's a really good, it's a really good club, whatever. You know, at the time it was a uh, run by the fans, isn't it? If I'm correct. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. you know, so he said it was a real proper family-based uh, club. So, you know, I thought to myself, you know what? Let me give it a go. You know, it's in, it's in, it's south of the border as well. So, you know, <laughs> I can get to stay back at my mum's house and drive across. Um, you know, and I thought, yeah, I thought I'd give it a go, really. And, you know, once I got once I got there, the first day of training, uh, pre-season training, you know, all the lads were warming. Like obviously the old boys who were there previously, with the FA Trophy and stuff like that. Uh, I already knew Mark Ricketts already when we played uh, at Charlton, you know, years back. So me, you know, uh, playing with him again, it was it was quite good. And yeah, the boys we had was amazing. And uh, what sort of ambitions did that did Ebster have? Um, well, at the time, it was just, um, you know, got through the FA Trophy and got to the finals. It was just, you know, let's move on to the next one where let's try and get out of this league and try and get, and try and get another run, you know, for the FA Trophy. Um, and yeah, that, that, was, that was the achievement for us. That was our goal to hit that season. And uh, we done okay in your, in your first. We done okay in the first season. I think we got to the FA Trophy semi final, uh, yeah. sort of mid table. But in the, in the second season, unfortunately, we got rele- relegated. Was it disappointing to to have that relegation? Yes, most definitely. Um, you know, obviously, I've already been through it already with Swindon. Um, so you know, I know the feeling, and obviously, the boys there who haven't been through that. Um, you know, I was one of those ones where. I had a shoulder for them to cry on, really, you know what I mean? And obviously let them know that, you know, it's not all bad, you know. Um, it just hasn't happened for us this season. And, you know, we just got to rebuild and start again for the following season. Um, and, you know, as it, as it did, it showed them what we did after. It was just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you mentioned um, the year after. Talk us through that season. Yeah, that season was, um, was, I must admit, like, the boys we had, it was it was crazy, you know, where, you know, Dean Poole, 
uh, Westy, Callum Willock, uh, Ramara, um, who else? Preston, Preston Edwards? Preston Edwards, Preston Edwards, yeah. Preston Edwards um, uh, Tom Fitt, Craig Stone, you know, uh, Laurel. Laurel, Laurel, Laurel. Yeah, um, you know, and Easty, oh, Easty, funny character, funny guy he was. Um, but yeah, no, that, that year was, was crazy with the caliber of players. You know, we had everything, a bit of everything. And um, for, for what we did that year, it, it showed and it proved that, you know, we worked really hard and we got our just awards from it. What was that, what was that final luck against uh, Farnborough? Yeah, that was that was amazing. That was amazing. It was, you know, um, it was first ever time that my my mother in law came and watched me that game, um, <laughs> and, and obviously my my wife now um, was watching as well. And for me to score as well, you know, to make them proud, it was just it was crazy. It was a crazy crazy game, crazy game, and obviously a, a good finish to uh, to our road, the end of the road. And after racking up. Uh, over 150 appearances for Ebsley. You moved on to, uh, to Kidderminster. What made you choose to go to Kidderminster? You know, I, you know, I, wa- I wanted to change for myself. Um, obviously, like, you know, I was at Ebsley for four years. Uh, and I just, I just, I don't know, I just wanted to change. It was just different. I wanted to get out of London. Um, and... I could not tell you how Kidderminster came about. I think they called my agent or something like that. And, you know, I just said to you, yeah, what the heck? Why don't I just go out and try for, try for a year? And, um, you know, that year we came close to get promoted again. We finished second and it went down to the wire of the last game of the season. Um, us and Mansfield at the time. And obviously Mansfield got promoted. And you know we we got through to uh, we was in the you know the playoffs, but it didn't really it didn't really help because the last game of the season, we um, they was playing against Wrexham at the time, and Wrexham put out um, not a decent squad. They put out majority of the youngsters and stuff like that because they knew they was already in the playoff final, so the playoffs. So they was resting their players, you know, and obviously Mansfield won the game. We won our game against, I think it was Southport at the time, and they was already relegated anyway, and it didn't work out. But then we had to play Wrexham in the um, in the semis, and obviously they they got their players rested, so they're coming out with fresh legs, and we just still had tired legs for the for the last game of the season. So that didn't really help for that didn't really help us either. Uh, but you know that's what happens in the game really, and you know we just move forward from it. Mm-hmm. You say after a year at, at Kidderminster, you moved down to to Boreham Wood, who were you know they were established sort of Conference South side then. Um, why did you choose to sign for for Boreham Wood? Uh, well, you know, obviously wanted to come back down south again, and I think it was just one of the ones where I come back down south and try to stay in south. Um, and it come about where you know Luke Garrard, who's the manager now, he was the assistant manager over there. And he recommended me to uh, Ian Allison at the time, who was the manager, because, you know, he was at Swindon the year uh, before I came. So, obviously, he knew about me already. And, obviously, me playing against them, against Bournemouth when I was at Edge Street as well, you know, so they already knew about me. Um, and, yeah, no, it was just a nice, nice, tidy club being there. And, yeah, you know, it worked out, worked out good, worked out good for me in the long run. But, obviously... My first season didn't really work out as planned. Um, you know, signing a contract in the morning and then training in the afternoon and fully ruptured my Achilles tendon, you know, at training first day of pre-season training, just in a, a yo-yo test, didn't really help me, you know. Didn't, didn't go against my favour. <laughs> but I uh, managed to, you know, managed to rattle through it um, at the time where I was doing my rehab I managed to do my personal training course, so qualify PT now. Um, and that was just to buy time as well and, you know, and keep me going because, and just keep me active at the same time. And I think that helped, helped me as well. Um, they offered me a job to do coaching as well with the, you know, the academy boys to keep me there. And, you know, I bounced back 
like nine months later, I played like the last couple games of the season. I came back in uh, March, so mid March, started playing in the reserves, uh, doing well in the reserves, scoring in reserve team. And the first team manager, Ian, was like, Get him back. I need him back into the first team, you know, get him back. And Fizzy was like, He's not ready yet. He's like, No, no, no. I want him back because he's doing well, really well right now. So, you know, my first game, it was in, um, at the time, it was like the Hart Senior Cup and it was against Watford. Watford. So I came on and did well. And then from there, you know, done well. Um, second, the second year, the second year I was there, obviously back, back fit. You know, that, that year, that year when we got promoted, that was the year we got promoted. And I played every, every minute of every game, apart from one game, and it was against Ebbsfleet, but I came off after 80 minutes. So you might as well say I played the whole game anyway. Um, but, you know, for me to bounce back from a Achilles tendon, and, you know, they say, you know, that's one of the worst injuries you can have, that and obviously your ACL. And for me to bounce back the following year and playing every single minute, and getting promoted at the same time was a big bonus. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned that the promotion. Uh, how did that feel? Oh, amazing, amazing. You know, for for like a small club like that, you know, um, same thing, going through, going through the playoffs, you know, leading up to the playoffs, semi-finals and finals, and obviously the finals being on our patch, you know, not like Ebsley where it was away, but this time mm. finals that, you know, at Bourne Wood, and um, actually winning, you know, it was amazing. It was amazing. You know, all, all the fans running on the pitch, you know, the players we had as well, you know, like Liam Goal, like Junior Marias, you know, where they've gone on in their careers now. Um, yeah, it was, no, it was a good feeling, great feeling. Obviously, then went into, into the National League. Um, I think your first season, you stayed up on the final day. And then the second season, you're sort of much, much higher and sort of mid-table. What did you make of those sort of first two years in the, in the National League? Yeah, well, the, you know, the first year is always going to be a diff- difficult year, you know, especially, obviously, at a club at Bournemouth, you know, it was, a, it was a small club, small fan base club as well, um, experience into, the, you know, the Football League. And it's going to be tough, you know, because you don't really know much. You don't know, you know what I mean, the, the teams you're up, up against and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it was a tough year, a very tough year. But you know, we pulled through. We pulled through, and you know, we had faith, and we managed to get through, and you know, survive for another year. And then we could just build on it. You know, that was an amazing feeling. You know, and then obviously it was just a, you know, you only can go up from there, really. You know, where you know, where you had your fighting relegation, and it's like, okay, cool. Well, next season now, we only we can't do any worse now. We we we've experienced it now. We had a sniff of it. So, you know, let's go. Let's, let's try and aim up. Yeah. And then if we if we go on to the season after, I believe um, that was when you went on a little bit of an FA Cup run. How did it feel to beat Blackpool in the FA Cup? Yeah. You know what? It, it was really good, you know. Obviously, you know, playing like a higher league, you know, there's, it's always going to be nerve-wracking. Um, at the time, I, I was, well, I was watching. I was in the stands at the time. But me just being, you know, being there, and being part of the squad, you know, and for it to happen where um, it was Dan Holman and um, Blair Turgut coming off the bench and scoring, both of them coming off the bench and both of them scoring to, you know, get us through to the next round, it was just unreal, unbelievable. And as soon as the whistle blew, I jumped out of the stand, ran onto the pitch and I just went straight to them because they were having a hard time, you know, they was alone to us as well. Um, for them to do that, you know, they've created history. They're part of history. Um, and, yeah, you know, I just had to come on there, you know, and congratulate both of them. And obviously, we've got to talk about, if you got to the playoffs, uh, we'll get to, we'll talk about the, the playoff final in a little minute. But, obviously, what was it like, obviously, getting to the playoffs? And then you done so well, you beat Fylde and you beat Sutton. We spoke to Luke and he said, after that Sutton game, he was uh, probably one of the best feelings he's had. What was it like, you know, winning those two playoff games and doing so well in the normal season as well? Yeah, you know what, like, you know, the, it was a, the build up to it, you know, the same again, the caliber of players we had, you know, it was unreal. Um, and it was one of them one where we was like, you know, we're going to do something this year. We, we're we're going to achieve big this year. Um, and the build up to it, you know, playing against Fylde, 
it was it was it was amazing, you know. But you know, we had we had mishaps on the along up there along the way. You know, we had J, Jamie Turley. You know, he he broke his jaw in the game. Um, you know, we had Kane Smith. He uh, done his ACL. So it was it was crazy. You know, it was crazy that that was happening all in one game. You know, obviously Kane Smith had to come off, and um, Jamie, the hard man, ah. Oh, he carried on playing with a broken jaw. I, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. But you know what? Mm. I just said to myself, you know, that's just him. He's just crazy. He doesn't care. He just carried on going. And obviously that made it, you know, we obviously got through to the, se- to the semis. But knowing that we're missing out on our two key players, uh, you know, who played, you know, every game of the season. Um, and then going on to Sutton, you know, it was one of the ones where, you know, we had a decent squad. We had a good enough squad that we can get through to the finals. And obviously, the people who came in for them, you know, we had um, Scott Doe, who's had to come in for them, fill in for him. He was, on, um, he was on loan to us as well. And he didn't really play as much, but he had came in and fill in. Um, and obviously, Danny Woodard as well. You know, he was, he's getting on as well. So, for him to come on, he hasn't been playing as much. And for him to come on and, and do well and fill in, you know, it was really good. And obviously, Scott Dole scored on that day as well against Sutton as well. So, you know, he 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 um he had a part of it for us to get through to the finals. You went to you went to Wembley. Um, your first time at Wembley. Unfortunately, it didn't go too well. But what was it like, obviously, playing at Wembley? Yeah, you know, obviously that's just one of my goals. Um, you know, I got to tick off and say, you know, I've played at Wembley. Not many, not many footballers have actually made it to Wembley and played at Wembley. So. You know, actually being from London and playing at Wembley, that's just one of the ones where, you know, you, you can say, you know, I've done it. Um, atmosphere was amazing. You know, the pitch was lush. Oh, it was unreal. It was, like, it was carpet. It was literally carpet. Um, and the changing room, changing room was amazing, how big it is. You know, and obviously it's just, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. And obviously being there, Obviously, things didn't work out as planned. Um, you know, obviously, I probably, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if it's in the Guinness Book of Records or that guy to get sent off in the first minute. <laughs> you know, um, red card in the first minute. I don't know at Wembley. I don't know if that's in Guinness Book of Records because that was just, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know what he was thinking. I, you know, he's lost the ball. He's lost the ball, and he was nowhere, nowhere getting it. And I thought to myself, you know, let me just, I'll just get there first. Not knowing that he was just going to leap from like, you know, I don't know how many feet away. When I was replaying it, I was thinking, what are you doing? Why are you leaping so far? <laughs> like, you're not going to get there. You know, do you, I'm, I'm quick enough, mate. I'm getting there before you. And, you know, I mean, I mean it did hurt at the time. Um, but, you know, touch wood that, you know, he didn't break anything. Um, and I managed to play play the game. But, it made it difficult for us at the same time, you know. So maybe, maybe in hindsight that, you know, it wasn't a good thing that he got sent off because now it's just, you know, they're sitting behind the ball and we've got to try and break them down. And it's, it's hard, it's, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard enough where you're trying, they just have two banks of four and you're trying to break a team down because all they're doing is just going side to side, side to side, you know. And for us to try and find little gaps, it's not as hard because, no one's actually coming out to come and come and tackle you, really. So you can't really find little gaps. Um, so it, it was hard. We tried our best, tried our very best, and it was just you know we were disappointed. Obviously, we got the equaliser and everything, and you know for them to um, sucker punch us and score on a on a break on a counter attack, you know, it was very disappointing um, for us, you know, as a team, as a manager, and obviously as um, you know the chairman, but. What can you do? It's gone, and you just got to, you just got to move on. You know you can't always go back to it. You know you, you especially them ones. You just got to forget about the past and try and move forward and see what you can achieve on the next one. Mm-hmm. And um, when when we spoke to to Luke, he said um, how he how on he would have changed his tactics if he could do it again. As players, did you sort of? think oh we could have done something differently or we could have done more 
Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I think so. When you, you know, when you look back at it and you think to yourself, okay, well, if I'm in this situation next time, how can I break this down? You know, but in the spirit of the moment at that time, you know, it, it's, everything's going fast. Everything's going fast. So you, you're trying to suss things out or whatever to try and, you know, see how to break things down. But yeah, you, you know, when you look back at it, you think to yourself, okay, cool, well, you know, maybe I should have done this or maybe I should have done that. And obviously to try and draw out players, you know. Um, but it was one of them ones where it was, it was, we had a tough season. You know, we've already had, well, it ended up being three key players, you know, who we have, who was out of the game. You know, we had Morgan Ferrier as well, where he done his, he done his hamstring uh, after the foul. So he didn't even get to play the Sutton game either. Um, and hello. And um, so you had three team players who was out, but what can you do? You can't. You got. You got to play with what you've got in front of you. And we, we spoke to to Luke, and he said there was a bit of a sort of maybe there was a bit of a hangover the season after, and the recruitment wasn't as good, and you struggled a little bit in the season after, and you, you know what, you didn't look. You weren't going to get relegated, but, uh, but you, uh, you like you were like much, much further down. Was that season tough? Yeah, it was. It was. It was because. It is, it is one of them ones where, you know, where you've, where you've already set the bar of us being in the playoff finals, you know, you've already set that bar. So it's like, OK, next season, I've got to try and recruit, got to recruit better or whatever, you know. And, yeah, it didn't work out. You know, the recruitment didn't really help as much as we thought it would be, you know, when you try and bounce back from the following season. Um, but, yeah, like, we, we went mid-table, finished mid-table. Um, and, you know, you learn your lesson from it and you think to yourself, OK, cool, well, you know, I know what I've got to recruit on. I obviously, I know players who I need to bring in, players who need to go, you know, and, um, yeah, it's one of them ones where, you know, you have to be ruthless as a manager as well. It's one of them ones where, you know, the, the player could be a nice guy or whatever, but he wasn't to your standard or, you know, your quality, what you wanted to bring to the squad. Um, and yeah, that that's it really. And um, in terms of representing your country, I, I know you've done that quite a few times. How proud are you of this? Yeah, no, it was it was, it was amazing. You know, obviously um, representing Trinidad first. Uh, that's where my mom's from. Uh, when I was, I was playing in the under twenty threes, that was when I was at Swindon at the time. So I represented for them under twenty threes. Uh, in two thousand and six. Um, I played like with the seniors in a friendly against Iceland at Loftus Road, and that was where they was already qualified for the World Cup for uh, tw uh, 2006, uh, one in Germany, and you know I was I was on standby for for them. Um, so obviously playing with the likes of Stern John, Shaka Hislop, um, Dwight York, um, Kerman Jones, you know the list goes on and on. Um, and, you know, being so close to being on standby for the World Cup, it was just one of those ones where, you know, you just have your fingers crossed really, you know, but you don't wish anything on anybody. But if someone was supposed to get injured, then, you know, they'll be flying me out of there and I'll be playing at the World Cup or, you know, being in the squad in the World Cup. Um, and, yeah, then obviously didn't hear anything after that. You know, four years pass and... Being at, when I was at Ebsfleet at the time, a guy called Faisal Khan, he came and he approached me after the Ebsfleet game and he was um, one of the representatives for Guyana and, you know, he knew my dad was from Guyana and, you know, he approached me and he said, you know, you fancy playing in the World Cup qualifiers? And, you know, I didn't turn that down with a heartbeat, really. I said, yeah, of course. You know, obviously, he knew about my previous with Trinidad. He was like, no, that's fine. We'll get everything sorted with the FA. And then obviously I moved on and, you know, started playing for Guyana. And um, that was a great experience, you know, flying, flying the other side of the world, you know, and obviously playing against, you know, teams of like Mexico, Costa Rica, El Salvador, um, playing against Trinidad and Tobago as well. Um, that was probably, that's one of my highlights of my career, um, playing against Trinidad, scoring against them and uh, being assist as well uh, and knocking them, and knocking them out 
of the World Cup qualifiers to move <laughs> on to the next stage. And that went down in history anyway to move on to the next stage because Guyana never actually done that. You know, and then you've got to play against Mexico, Costa Rica, El Salvador, you know, playing against Hernandez, playing against Salcido, you know, playing against De Santos, you know, all them players. It's like, wow, playing at, play, playing at the Azteca Stadium in Mexico with 90,000 watching you is very nerve-wracking. I'll tell you that from now. You know, it got to a point where, you know, I'm trying to communicate with my teammates who's two, two metres away from me and they can't hear what I'm saying because the crowd, the Mexican fans are crazy. You know what I mean? They are mad. You know, they've got the, the fellas going round and the horns. It was, it was unreal, but it was a great experience. Great experience, I must admit. I must admit. And then obviously, then you had being at El Salvador, where in Central America, you know, that was, that was crazy experience where, you know, I'm walking out the tunnel and I'm seeing police with like shotguns in their hands, guns in their hands, just all the way around the stands. And you just see the fans are like behind cages. I'm thinking, what am I in? What am I in for? What's going on? You know, um, and they were they were saying they was hostile. There was like fifty five thousand watching, and um, that get redrawn. And after the game, they clapped up. They applauded us off the pitch. You know, and that was very that was very good. You know, because it was one of them ones where they just saw us as a small island, and we were just going to get battered by them by the team. And they saw us perform, and we done well against them. And you know, they gave us they gave us our praises for it. Obviously, going back to to Bournemouth, you, you had your your last last season playing this year. Um, what have you thought of this season? Uh, this season, oh, we was we was on to big things. You know, we was we were doing really well. Uh, the players, we players, we have. You know, um, it was a good. I must admit, like the gaffer, you know, it was a good recruitment uh, this year. Um, you know, with Tyro Marsh, the strikers. Uh, Cabs, another striker, you know, scoring the goals, and I think that's what we was missing. You know, we had the, we had like the defensive side to it the pre previous year, you know, but it was just the lack of goals up top. Um, you know, it was one of them ones where this year, when the ball was going up top, it was staying up top. It was giving the defenders a breather. It was giving them, you know, they could actually relax a bit. You know, not too relaxed, but <laughs> they can actually ease off, and then we was actually getting goals from it as well. Um, and I think, yeah, it was really, it was really good. You know, we obviously we had young players coming through. You know, we have Zorba Thomas. Um, you know, a young young lad coming through right now. You know, look out for him. He's gonna be, he's gonna be a talent. Um, and you know, I was his coach at the same time. You know, he come through the ranks, and me coaching him and actually playing playing with him is just crazy. Training with him, you know, he he was my car school, even though he didn't have a car, but he was in my car school. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, I learned a lot about him, and you know, he, you know, he listened to me. I was like a big bro to him, you know. And obviously, I wish him well. You know, we keep in contact and stuff like that. And I just tell him, you know, just keep your head down and just, you know, keep going. Obviously, you decided mm. to to retire recently. What what made you retire? You know, I thought I'm, I'm getting on a bit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 35. Like obviously, I you know, I said at the start, at the very start of the season, I said, you know. This is going to be my last year, um, turning turning 35 this year, and it's like you know, I'm looking to finish up, regardless of how things was going to go, go ahead. Uh, you know, I didn't really get to play this much uh, this season, but you know that's football for you. But it was one of them ones where I already made my decision, and I thought to myself, you know, it's time for me to just you know kick back, settle settle down a bit more, you know, be more with the family. Uh, it takes a lot out of you, you know, travelling, you know, um, travelling here and there, especially the National League, you know what I mean? I'm travelling up to Barrow, travelling to Gateshead at the time. And, you know, you don't really get to see, your, you don't really get to see your kids that much, you know, you leave, you leave home, in, you leave home in the dark, you come back home in the dark. And it's, it's unreal, you know, as, as fans, you must, you must, you know, you experience them once, yeah. Yeah. you know, I just, just, just imagine I, I'm doing that and I've got kids as well. And then when it comes to Sundays, I can't really do much with them because I'm just too tired through the week. And, um, you know, and that's the, that's the only days off I can have. I mean, you've got to try and fit. I've got to try and fit as much as possible, you know, go see, you know, the family, my mum and stuff like that and spend time with the kids. And, you know, he wants to get a ball and kick around and, 
I'm too tired to do that, you know. And just imagine he'd be he'd probably looking at me thinking, You call yourself a professional footballer and you can't even kick a ball with me, Dad. <laughs> like you know. So, you know, I was so cool. I will I'll call it a day. Um mm-hmm. and then, yeah, that's it. Just move on. What what are your plans for sort of um now you're retired obviously you know you do your, your fitness stuff do you think you're still trying maybe do a bit of like coaching with football or something well you know obviously i I did the coaching at formwood um i'll say never say never but you know at the moment because i've already done the coaching there um just you know i just want to break from football in total at the moment mm. um just just imagine i've been i've been playing it for like 19 years non-stop you know that's a very long time how, how old are you boys 18 Eighteen. Seventeen. Seventeen, see? So I you know, <laughs> I was playing it before you even born. <laughs> you know, my first first pre season. So you could just imagine. Um but yeah, no. And I I've 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 just realized now, yeah, my, my shirt actually said nineteen at the back as well. So me finishing on nineteen years, you know, is is quite good. Um but you know, I you know, we never say never. But it's just one of the ones where, you know, I need a break from the football life and just, you know, have a like, normal routine and a different routine at the same time and just see where it takes me. Uh, do you want to go through your, your best 11? My best 11? You know, I actually have to write it down as well. Oh. Um, my best my <laughs> best 11. So, okay. All right, so my best 11. So when I was at Bolton, I must say, so JJ Okocha, yeah, a skillful player. You know, um, I was at the Arsenal game at the time where, you know, he, he rainbow flicked over. I, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Ray Parler or someone on the line. I managed to get past him. And I was like, no, what a player he was. Um, another guy, Kevin Nolan, you know, as a youngster coming through the ranks, through academy ranks. And, you know, and I, I stayed at the same digs where he was. So when he moved out, I moved into there. So he used to come and visit us, uh, me and another guy, Cleveland Taylor, who used to stay there. Um, you know, and he used to help us out because obviously he just, you know, he came through as a youngster, so he used to help us out in that way. Um, then I moved on to Swindon, you know, I had a drill, I feel, you know, we called him the beast, you know, he was a centre half. No one, no one could get past him, trust me, he was a beast, you know. Um, a matter of fact, like, you know, I must pick up his, uh, his younger daughter was singing on X Factor, you know, I saw it the <laughs> other day. I was thinking, wow, she's a big girl, man, you know, so I must say, um, you know, big up to him with that. Um, Luka, Luka Djukovic, another young lad at Swindon, you know, he moved on, he went to that um, Middlesbrough and stuff like that. You know, he was a young lad, younger than me, and, you know, I could see potential in him. Um, and then when I went on to Brentford, a, night, a guy, a veteran, like uh, Kevin O'Connor, you know, I think, I don't know, he'd been at, Brentford for I could say probably 10 to 12 to maybe 20 years now you, you know he just kept on playing kept on playing and he was just unreal um, another guy met at Brentford obviously you know him as Darius Charles he moved on to you another strong guy you know it was one of them ones where he had the iron bar as soon as you put the iron bar there you couldn't get past him um, sweet left foot and then you know when I edge fleet obviously I've got to say Michael West Michael West, you know, young guy, young player coming through the ranks. Obviously, he moved on, he got crew and stuff like that. Done very well. Um, when I was at Kidderminster, uh, Shane Dunkley, centre-half, like strong guy. You know, he's doing well at Wigan. I think he's injured now, but, you know, he's been doing well there. Um, when I was at Boreham Wood, so Boreham Wood, I had, you know, being there, I'd, obviously, I've been there the longest at Boreham Wood. Um, Kieran Murta, he's still there now. You know, um, centre midfielder can't get the ball off him at all. Like, and he's so when I mean he's so cash, so cash. He the ball the ball will be in our half of the field in our penalty box, and the ball up in the sky, and he'll bring it down. He wouldn't even clear it. He'll just bring it down and start dribbling it out of it or find a pass. And I'm like, how is he doing that? You know, he could get and you know Luke Garrod will say the same. You know, cool guy. Um, Bruno Andrade as a striker, you know, great guy, great person. You know, moved on with Lincoln. Obviously, got promoted with Lincoln. Uh, another guy, uh, Andrew, Angelo Belanta. Ah, oh, crazy feet. You know, and he's another one. Bothered as like bothered, but I mean, he's just chilled. Everything's just nice and slow. But he does it. 
he does it with class. It's unreal. He just makes people for fun. Like, you know, he does it. He makes people in slow motion. I don't know how you could do it in slow motion. <laughs> yeah, to make someone. Um, and yeah, and that's my 11. But, you know, as I say, my, my subs, I'll say literally everybody who I played with, you know, uh, at every single club I've been at, um, they would be my subs, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, having playing with all those players wouldn't have made me at the end of the day, you know, mm. as a player. Uh, you know, I've learned, I've learned a lot through, you know, so many players and playing with them and even some playing against them as well. Um, playing against them and then all of us, and then now they're my teammates, you know, as one of them ones where you learn from that as well. Um, you know, where, where it, it's hard because you play, you'll play against someone so, like, prime example, like, he was at Edfleet at the time. Um, so, Ishmael Welsh, and when he was at Grey's, Grey's Athletics, and we used to play against each other, and he's obviously left wing, I'm right wing, playing against each other. And he, he was little, and he was, you know, he was very skillful, and he's trying to put it through my legs and from passing, and he's coming out with little comments and stuff like that. You know, it gets, it gets, gets to you, you know. And, um, and then, all of a sudden, we're playing for the same team. We're on the same team for Edfleet. I mean, you know, you just go back and you just laugh at each other and think to yourself, you know, where he used to wind me up and stuff like that on the field. You know, you never, you know, you never see that I'll be wind up at all, but he used to wind me up a lot. And, um, you know, playing with him, we, we end up being good friends, you know. Um, I must admit that like, that Fleet squad where we, like, we gelled together was that, like, you know, with Ishmael Welsh, uh, Dean Paul, Leon Crooks, uh, Kezi Ibi, um, Darius Charles and um, Derek Duncan, you know, and we was tight. We were, you know, we were a unit. Um, there was one point where Liam Dace called us um, the Jackson Five because we, <laughs> we was always together, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, no, it was really good, it was really good, and a good, great experience for me. Who would you have uh, managing that team? Uh, managing, oh. See, I know I know Luke Garrett will be watching that, so you know I, I've got to say I've got to say I've got to pick up him. You know he's he done what he done well as a young manager, um, but if I say manager, I'll probably say who I've had. Probably I'll say Dennis Wise. Dennis Wise definitely. You know I really like really enjoyed it with him, um, and yeah, Gus Point would have to be the assistant manager because. The banter was just flying and stuff like that, you know. What I mean, um, not saying not saying Luke Garrett got banner, but he Luke Garrett got a lot of banner. Trust me, trust me on that. You know, you might hear him shouting a lot on the pitch, but behind closed doors and on the training field, oh my days, his banter is oh, it's crazy. Uh, two more questions before you go. Uh, you've had three promotions in your career. Which one of those is the best? Oh, oh, you put me on the spot now. <laughs> Um, see, the thing is, I've got to, I've got to say actually, because I, I I scored on it, you know, I scored I scored on the I scored in the playoff playoff finals, and to win as well. So, M three would be at the top. M three would be at the top. Then second second would be Bournemouth, and then third would be Swindon. Swindon. And final question. Uh, a tough one, but what's the best moment in your career? Sorry, say that again? What's the best moment in your career? Best moment? See, I have a couple. So, <laughs> I have a couple. Um, as I said to you before, uh, for my country, Guyana, playing at Trinidad, mm -hmm. knocking them out. Um, and then, next one will probably be Probably Wembley, Wembley final. All right, we'll, we'll let you go now. Thanks, thanks for your time, Ricky. Um, all the no best problem. Uh, with the stuff. Uh, yeah, cheers. All the best. Thanks for your time, Ricky. No problem. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank yeah. you. Be, be safe.